as you can tell from what happened at the golf course, it's not even a question of added protection, it's a question of basic protection. First up is the second assassination attempt on the life of uh, President Trump. It occurred last Sunday uh, while he was golfing. Uh, a leftist, a leftist radical, uh, was uh, caught by a Secret Service agent, uh, the circumstances of which to me are still unclear, uh, ready to shoot him a little bit away from where he was golfing. Uh, at the time, he probably, I don't know where he was aiming or what sight he had of President Trump, given the weapon he had, he had the ability uh, to kill him uh, right then and there, at least from the spot. And supposedly the Secret Service agent saw the gun in the bushes near a fence or through a fence. Again, it's unclear because the Secret Service hasn't been terribly forthcoming or I don't even think they understand what happened at this point still. And uh, he fled and he was later arrested because a civilian, a civilian, a heroic civilian, saw him running away, realized that something was up and took some pictures, including of the, um, uh, the car in which he drove away and got his license plate. And so they were able to get him relatively quickly. Uh, now, Mr. Ruth is his name, has been since arrested, as I note. And uh, there's some, um, there's a picture of him. He's, a, I think he's about, what, 58 or so? I think there's a little bit of, we have a little bit of video of him um, getting arrested. Let's run one of those videos. Two steps to your right! Take two steps to your right! Driver, walk straight back! Keep walking! What's your name, Austin? Ryan. Ryan? Exceedingly dangerous situation for the police there. They didn't know what they were running up against there. For all I know, his his car could have been wired with explosives. He could have been wired with explosives. Very precarious situation law enforcement was placed in as a result of the Secret Service failures. The failures which are extraordinary, especially in light of the prior failures that got Trump killed uh, almost two months to the day beforehand. Uh, the perimeter of the golf course wasn't secured. He was sitting out there, the data from his phone suggests, for 12 hours. And the Secret Service didn't do the basic perimeter security sweep at his golf course that he golfs at all the time? Inexcusable. I don't think it's incompetence anymore. Not that I ever really thought it was incompetence. I think it's willful negligence. I think the Secret Service, under the command and control of the Biden-Harris regime, is has been uh, giving Trump uh, not enough security on purpose. And you know, I know that's a tough statement to say, but this administration has a demonstrated record of making protection decisions based on politics. They denied it to Robert F. Kennedy Jr. as Judicial Watch uncovered and disclosed. Meyer Ork has personally denied Secret Service protection to Robert Kennedy. He only was granted it for a brief period of time after Trump was nearly killed. They denied Secret Service protection to President Biden's granddaughter. One of Hunter's children, he was with, uh, he was in, involved in a, some type of uh, dispute with his, with the mother of the child over, uh, um, you know, payments for the child support. And so this kid was put at risk because the Biden family didn't seemingly want to acknowledge the relationship in any public way, meaning Secret Service protection for her. And it's not about money. I mean, we're gonna hear this week um, and next week 
oh, the secret, we gotta give money Secret Service. Don't you believe it? They've got three plus billion dollars. Their budget keeps on going up and up and up. It's not about money. These are political decisions to deny resources necessary to protect Trump, given the threats he faces. And immediately after the second assassination attempt, the Secret Service, as I note in one of my tweets here, they start leaking to the Washington Post, and this was actually, they had done this before too, but it was more and more the same, that, that Trump should have known his golf courses weren't safe. I mean, they're trying to make us believe that this federal agency that has, virtually speaking, unlimited resources is unable to secure a golf course. Don't you believe it? And frankly, it began, you know, at least after the first assassination attempt, everyone was seemingly horrified. But immediately the left took a different tact after the, the second assassination attempt. And I think it's a tact that is ex terribly dangerous for the future of the country. They've crossed yet another Rubicon. So many Rubicons have been crossed, it seems, when it comes to the attacks on Trump and the efforts to undermine our constitutional system and the rule of law. But the left and their media mavens, or their media allies and henchmen, they've decided that they're going to tell Americans that Trump deserves to be shot because of his rhetoric. You hear this repeated refrain that, and, you know, given his heated rhetoric, we should expect this type of violence. Blaming the victim. And the suggestion is, if he does get killed, it's his fault. It's not the fault of the Secret Service that's obligated to protect him. It's not the fault of politicians who have used the most extreme language to describe him. I mean, if you are talking about someone as a threat to democracy and, quote, dangerous, it's one thing to say, I don't like these ideas. I think these ideas are terrible. But to say the person is dangerous and a threat, an existential threat, as has been described. Is it any surprise that someone like Mr. Ruth would follow up? Look at what Hillary said right after the assassination. And I don't understand why it's so difficult for the press to have a consistent narrative about how dangerous uh, Trump is. There you have it. Exhibit A in the effort to gin up violence against President Trump. What's also very interesting is the background of Mr. Ruth. He is notorious. He's well known in the media. He had been quoted in the New York Times, many other publications, as being um, involved in trying to get foreign nationals, including Americans, to go and fight in Ukraine. He was in Ukraine for a period of time. According to the Wall Street Journal, the U.S. government was warned about him because he was seen as a, as a nut and dangerous. A former CIA official also took note of him. And I tell you, if you were an American fighting in, in, um, in Ukraine, or messing around as he was, you can be sure the CIA was monitoring you. If the CIA was doing its job, it would be monitoring you. A, an American fighting in a theater such as Ukraine. And of course, his, his international travels and his, <laughs> the kind of the crazed things he was involved in raises all sorts of significant questions about who knew what and when about him. What did the CIA know about him? What did the FBI know about him and when? It also raises questions about foreign, um, whether he was being run or managed or manipulated by foreign intelligence services or foreign entities. If he's in Ukraine, it could have been the Ukrainians running him. It could have been the Russians running him. You don't know. He'd been arrested repeatedly. 
And he was dangerous. He, he made, he repeatedly cited violent rhetoric. So the government, again, I, I, I've, I've noted, and it, uh, Robert, uh, I'm trying to think of the name, because it's not my, it's not my line. It's someone else's line. I can't give him credit because I can't remember his name. It, it's Poole. I think it's Robert Poole. Maybe it's Bill Poole. Well, anyway, Mr. Poole. He always has, has highlighted, you know, these people who show up with these, uh, behind these attacks. You know, the, the, the media language is a lone wolf. And he points out it's often they are known wolves. Ruth is no lone wolf. He's a known wolf. And irrespective of his background and suspicions about how he got there and how he magically knew to hang out at that golf course, I mean, I, you know, I follow Trump pretty closely. I don't know where he is from day to day and week to week. I mean, why was he in Florida? How, how, was, he, how was he funded? Why did he have the instinct to be at that golf course overnight, it sounds like? He was there from one in the morning until he fired or was caught, fired upon. All those sorts, all those are sorts, the type, all of those questions need to be answered. And who's going to answer them? The FBI? I don't trust the FBI. I just don't trust them. Uh, the FBI um, chief uh, of the uh, Miami office, the special agent in charge, Mr. I think I had a, I didn't call this up earlier, Mr. Um, what's his last name, Viteri? Put it up on my web, on my, on my Instagram, on, on my uh, Twitter. Well, anyway, back in what back in the uh, 2023, a whistleblower came forward and said that before he was elevated, he had to scrub and order, was ordered to scrub his uh, social media of anti-Trump vitriol. So he's an anti-Trumper, according to this whistleblower, according to the Washington Times. He's running the investigation. This FBI, as I tweeted out, that's trying to jail Trump is now investigating two attempts on his life. Is that not a conflict of interest, as I note here in this tweet? Who can you trust? The Secret Service? They, we caught them lying about whether or not they were denying Trump's um, uh, request for added protection. They were, and they denied it, and they were. And as you can tell from what happened at the golf course, it's not even a question of added protection, it's a question of basic protection. And of course, the agents who are close to Trump and, and surrounding him and the, and the agent who shot at him, he didn't hit him. You know, they, des they deserve support and they deserve to be raised up. But those men and women are being put in jeopardy because of the failure of the agency around them. I mean, the fact that someone had to shoot at someone who had been sitting there for 12 hours is a failure of the agency. That agent was put at risk. Obviously, President Trump and his friend he was golfing with and everyone else in that area was put at risk. And a judicial watch has been fighting for the truth. You know, we've been running up against Secret Service stonewalls for years. I mean, look at this, look at this chutzpah from President Biden on the Secret Service the other day.
the Secret Service needs help. Look what I wrote in a tweet there. Man who let his dog, dogs attack two dozen Secret Service personnel says the agency needs help. And I refer, click on that link to our Judicial Watch press release. How Biden let his dog just attack Secret Service agents time and time again. And nothing was done until Judicial Watch exposed it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.